Why, hello there, I am Professor Joel, and welcome to Plant Scooby Reviews. You just caught me eating my dinner for tonight. It is Scooby-Doo cereal. A little expired. It kind of expired in 2004, but delicious nevertheless. Today's episode is Guess Who's Not Coming to Dinner, and this episode is episode 5 of season 1 of the new Scooby-Doo movies. It originally aired on October 7th, 1972, and it's a fellow YouTuber named Gabri who requested this episode. So thank you, Gabri. This episode stars Don Knotts. If you don't know who Don Knotts is, he's pretty famous for his role as Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show, which uh, I think aired in the 50s and 60s, around the time Leave it to Beaver aired. And he was also famous after this episode for his role as Mr. Furley on Three's Company, he was very, very funny on that show. He, he just had the most amazing facial expressions and reactions. Plus, his outfits were like the cheesiest 70s outfits you could ever imagine. Worth checking out. Three's Company was a great, funny show. And he was also on another episode of Scooby-Doo, uh, same series, Scooby-Doo movies. And it was the Spooky Fog of Juneberry that was on. And we'll cover that another day. And he also lent his voice to the 2002 video game called Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. If you'd like to own this episode, they recently came out on Blu-ray, the, the new Scooby-Doo comedy movies. And you can also buy it on DVD. There's a two-set edition you can buy. So the first set has, I think, 13 episodes or so. And the second set has eight. And... It doesn't have the complete run between the two DVDs, but it has 23 out of the 24 episodes. Same with the Blu-ray. I'll leave a link below where you can buy them. And they're all guest star episodes. So you have Batman, you have the Harlem Globetrotters, you have I Have Dream of Genie, you have The Addams Family. Actually, nope, that's a lie. The Addams Family episode is the only one you don't have because it's not included due to licensing. Anyway, enough of my chitter chatter. Let's get on with it. This episode begins like so many episodes have before with the gang lost on a spooky road during a thunderstorm. The gang are trying to reach Pinecrest Lodge. You should have come to Pinecrest Mountain Lodge hours ago. On the road to the Pinecrest Lodge, they come across an old wrought iron gate with the words Moody Manor scrawled across it. Figuring they could ask for directions at the manor, Velmer gets out of the mystery machine to push open the gate. Instead, she ends up pushing the entire gate over. Halfway up the driveway, the mystery machine is stopped by a fallen tree, so the gang have to hike the remainder of the way up to the manor. And it is a long hike. As they stroll up to the manor, Don Knotts, disguised as a lumberjack, follows them. Frequently, Don Knotts sneezes due to a goldenrod allergy, causing his beard and mustache to come off. At the manor, everyone enters and the door locks behind them. Don Knotts appears in a new disguise as Featherstone the butler. You're fantastic. And he asks the gang if they are there to see Captain Moody. Before the gang can reply, Featherstone tells them that Captain Moody is not at the manor, but his good friend, Phineas is. Featherstone the butler rushes off to find Phineas. The gang continue looking for a way to escape the manor, and Scooby finds a secret passage. A series of trapdoors and sliding staircases brings them right back to the lobby where they are greeted by Phineas. Phineas is Don Knotts in disguise as a one-legged pirate. He has a wooden leg. Phineas mistakes them for Captain Moody's nieces and nephews and invites them to stay for dinner. There the gang politely pretend to eat as they are worried that they will be poisoned. I'll bet the cellar's just full of people who had their last <coughs> meal. Boy, that escalated quickly. Phineas then leaves the room to fetch the maid. Don Knotts, disguised as a maid, returns and shows the gang to their rooms. At this point, Velma and Daphne begin to suspect that all of the people they have met are related as they look so familiar. Freddy stays in his room to read to keep his mind off things, while Scooby and Shaggy head down to the kitchen to make some food. I'd much rather face up to a ghost than starve to death anyway. Daphne and Velma have the same idea. I'd much rather face a ghost than starve to death. 
but they chicken out halfway down the hallway and dash back to their rooms. In the kitchen, Shaggy and Scooby make themselves some epic sandwiches. Before they can even start their sandwiches though, the ghost of Captain Moody appears and scares Shaggy and Scooby back to the rooms. The ghost of Captain Moody then appears in their room by way of secret passage. Fred, Shaggy, and Scooby dash out of the room and run to where the girls are. The entire gang decide to hide in the closet, but that plan is foiled as the ghost appears within the closet. The ghost takes chase and begins chasing the gang throughout the entire mansion. During the chase, the ghost morphs between an apparition and Don Knotts disguised as Captain Moody. The guilty one must die! Midway through the chase, the ghost's hat and wig are knocked off and the gang start to get suspicious. Since the ghost looks like Phineas, and Phineas looks like Featherstone, the butler, and the butler looks like the maid, the gang thinks they are all tied together. Confronting the butler, they realize that it is Don Knotts, who claims to be Homer Pipsqueak, world famous private eye. The detective explains that he got a call from Captain Moody that morning that was quite distressing. After rushing to the manor, Mr. Pipsqueak couldn't find Captain Moody, and he suspects Captain Moody has been kidnapped by his nieces and nephews as they have a claim to a large portion of his inheritance. So Homer Pipsqueak gets the gang to help him search for Captain Moody. Donning a Sherlock Holmes-like outfit, Homer Pipsqueak explains that Captain Moody is worth millions and each niece and nephew would inherit a quarter of the fortune each. Initially, he thought the gang were the nieces and nephews, but after testing them with his many disguises, he realizes that they are who they say they are. Looking for Captain Moody, Shaggy runs into a real ghost at a mine, which is also on the property. Thinking it's Homer Pipsqueak in disguise, Shaggy leads the ghost back to Scooby and Mr. Pipsqueak, where they realize this is an actual ghost. To make matters worse, there's two of them. This altercation leads the gang to a mill, where they find the real Captain Moody tied up in a minecart. A well-crafted plan devised by Mr. Pipsqueak, not Freddy this time, traps the real ghost, which turns out to be Captain Moody's nephews. Detective Pipsqueak explains that the nephews showed up to kill Captain Moody to get their inheritance. Captain Moody is grateful that Detective Pipsqueak showed up before his nephews could finish the job. To celebrate, everyone sits down to a feast. Overall, this episode is super cool. I love this episode. At a 40 minute runtime, it does run on a bit too long. You have to remember this came, this was like the third season of Scooby-Doo, essentially. You had the first two seasons of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And then we started these movies. And I guess they thought the 40 minute runtime would, you know, keep kids entertained. But this episode does run on a bit too long. Had this been a 20 minute episode, this would be a perfect 10 out of 10. There's a lot to love in this episode. Don Knotts costume changes are awesome. They're so funny. There's a spooky manor full of uh, trap doors and secret stairwells and it has a super dark plot. I was surprised to hear Daphne crack a joke that the basement was full of dead bodies. I'll bet the cellar's just full of people who had their last <laughs> meal. And they don't shy away from the fact that the nephews intend to kill Captain Moody. Like, I don't think we have ever heard the word kill or die in a Scooby-Doo episode before. The guilty one must die. There's also some legit humor that still holds up after 47 plus years. I'd have to say this is probably the best of the guest star Scooby-Doo episodes in this series. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. I put a new video out every week. If you'd like to request an episode, leave a comment below or on my website at planetscooby.com. At planetscooby.com, I have written reviews of all these episodes plus the videos. Until next week, stay spooky.